I just want to be with her. I just want to see how in, much she enjoys and is fulfilled when I get out there and I'm involved in something that's important to her. How about when you get involved and help her make decisions, especially ones that relate to your children? How about this one? When you don't argue or counteract or, or correct her in front of the children. We already talked about this, but when you refuse to look lustfully at other women. How about when you show her, you demonstrate that you make both her and your marriage a priority? Again, never being critical of her in front of your children or others. Including her in social gatherings when uh, others may leave their spouse's home. Uh, this doesn't really have anything to do with anything, but uh, is everybody familiar with the Honeymooners, that show? Ralph Cramden, Ed Norton, and all that. Um, there was one particular episode where there was this fishing trip that they and their buddies in their lodge or whatever went on. And um, they took great pains to go without their wives and even to leave at five in the morning. And they uh, got in the car and thought they had made it and they turned around and there were their wives sitting in the car. <laughs> and it turned out they, they ended up enjoying it more with them than without them. How about... Um, when you tell your children if they happen to be disrespectful, you don't speak to your mother that way. And you enforce that. How about when you call her for no reason at all, but you let her know your plans or if your plans change? How about when you keep your commitments to her and you don't blow them off just because it's easy to change plans with her? So we come to the final thing, and that is esteem. Again, what's part of our wedding vows? To love, to honor, and to cherish. Esteem is another word for cherish. Your wife wants you to honor her and cherish her. Matter of fact, uh, Emerson Egridge, uh, the author of this, of this book that I love, says um, a lot of times when uh, people come to him for counseling and they say, uh, I just, I'm having trouble with my prayer life. And uh, I just, I, it doesn't seem like I'm getting through to the Lord. It seems like my prayers aren't being heard. And he says, how are you treating your wife? And he says, I didn't come here to talk about my marriage or my wife. I'm talking about my prayer life. And he said, yes, and I'm talking about your wife. How are you treating your wife? And that is, uh, again, going back to that little verse in 1 Peter 3, 7. There's a part of it that we quite often overlook. Go back there with me. 1 Peter 3, 7. It says, Husband, wife, Husbands likewise dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life. Finish it for me, please. Let your prayers be not hindered. Do we ever think about that? If it seems like our prayer life is not breaking through, or it seems that... What we pray for is just not being answered. That we look to our life. That we look to our marriage. Am I treating my wife as God would have me to? Am I treating her with understanding? Am I being gracious and caring? And am I cherishing? Am I treasuring my wife? Does she know it? Again, let's go back to Song of Solomon one more time. Song of Solomon chapter 8 and verse 6. Such a small book, I keep flipping through over it. Song of Solomon, chapter 8 and verse 6. Right there we read, Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm, for love is as strong as death. That's talking about cherishing, setting your wife as a seal upon your heart, as a seal on your arm. Again, I'm going to use an old-fashioned word here, chivalry. Is it still alive? Is it still alive in your marriage? Are we training our children to be chivalrous, to be thoughtful, to be caring? Again, what does uh, chivalry look like? Um, here's here's the, one of the, the best stories I've heard. You know, people talk about Billy Graham all the time. Bless his heart. He 
what a powerful, what a powerful way that God has used his life. But one of the most compelling stories I ever heard about Billy Graham was a man uh, actually once went to visit him in his home. And of course, Dr. Graham invited him inside and they sat down and, and, I, and here came Mrs. Ruth, Ruth Bell Graham, bringing them tea or coffee. And he said, every time Ruth walked in the door, Billy Graham stood up. And he didn't just get used to her presence or treat it as a light thing or as something run-of-the-mill or usual, but he was a gentleman to her. He was chivalrous to her. And if chivalry is dead in our marriage, well, we need to revive it. We need to begin to be thoughtful, caring, to roll out the red carpet for our wife. Again, here's the practical. Your wife will feel esteemed when you let her know, when you say things like you praise her and say, honey, I'm so proud of the way that you handled that. I was just, I was honored by the way you handled that. Or when you, again, speaking highly in front of, highly of her in front of others. When you do a simple thing like open the door for her. You get somewhere in the car, you walk around and you open the door up for her and then open it as you go in a restaurant or even in your own home. When you try something new with her, you're willing to do, again, getting back to doing something unplanned, do something new with her. When you give her, to her, not just to others, but you give her encouragement or praise with kindness and enthusiasm. How about this one? You notice something different about her hair clothes or something like that, but you notice. Um, how about when you, you're willing, now not everybody likes PDA, but you're willing to be physically affectionate with her in public. Not that you just fall all over her, but that you're, you know, you're willing to hug her. You're willing to give her a kiss. When you teach your children to show her and others respect and you enforce it and won't stand, with, for it, won't stand without it. When you value her opinion in the gray areas as, and especially when you do disagree, but you value her opinion as not wrong, but just different, different way of looking at it and still valid. When you choose family outings over guy things. Again, guys, I'm thankful that my wife is very gracious in the things that I like to do. She gives me grace. She lets, gives me some freedom to do them. And yet, uh, there's times that I need to choose to put myself on the back burner and choose her and our family over me. When you make her feel first in importance. And finally, when you're proud of her and all that she does. Um, you know, I could talk on and on and on and keep you here a long time tonight. But that word I just used, first in importance, we talked about the role of husband and wife. We talked about how the husband is to take that role of headship, that role of leadership, not to shrink back from it, but to seize it, to take it, to be willing to be the one to make the sacrifices. When there's somebody needs to lay down their life, you're willing to do that as Christ loved the church. And that means the, that I'm going to use the phrase first among equals. Your wife and you are equal. Not that the husband is superior to the wife, but you're first among equals. You are the one to step up and take those areas of responsibility. But the wife is first in importance. She's the one to whom I give honor and esteem and cherish and let the whole world know how I cherish her. And, you know, if I tie these two messages or the, the last couple of days together, I believe that not only would our marriages be revolutionized if we would allow God to begin to press these principles on our hearts, but I believe that the gospel itself would take on new meaning in, our, in, our, in this world and in, in our culture because something's not adding up somewhere. You know, we, we're saying all the right things. This... Uh, this country is more flooded with Christian material and Christian speakers and Christian books and all kinds of things than ever before. Yet something's not getting through. When we talk to people about the church, they say it's not relevant. And the fact is, 
is that they look at families, they look at marriages, they look at where things really meet, the rubber really meets the road, and they say, I don't see any difference. And that's where if people begin to see that difference, and when, when they ask about that difference, we don't necessarily point to a bunch of principles or anything like that. We point to Jesus Christ. He's present in our life. And that, I believe, is one of the things that God will use to change this world. But it's got to start in the home. It's got to start with husbands and wives sitting down together before the Lord and saying, Honey, I've had to repent before God. Can we repent together? And can we start on a fresh page? Uh, it starts with parents and children saying, you know, I can't do anything about all that's going on in the past, but can we start on a fresh page? So, I laid this before you tonight as uh, a plea and a heart's cry and as a, as a desire that God would bless your marriage, your one-of-a-kind relationship with your husband and with your wife as never before. Because I don't care if you've been married eight hours or 80 years. It will work if you Allow God to have His way. And it starts by surrendering ourselves to Him. Pastor, I'm going to pray and I'm going to turn it over to you. Father in Heaven, thank You so much for the precious treasure that our wives are. Father, may we see them as the princess that we just simply want to, to treat uh, in that way. And to go out of our way, Lord, to let her know that that's what she is every day. And Father, that as we do that... That we, would, that we would know that we are the cherished and honored Prince Charming in their eyes. And Lord, that uh, we would each be mutually fulfilled by the other. Father, I just ask that you would take these simple principles from your word, Lord. Allow us to hunger for them, to search them out, and put them into practice. Lord, we don't want to be presumptuous, but let us even go to the place of putting you to the test to say, Lord, I'm going to put your principles to work in, in my life and see what, what you do. And Lord, we would uh, be amazed. Thank you for what people are already doing in putting these principles to work. Father, we love you and we give ourselves to you once again in this service. Thank you for your grace that covers over us, that just uh, covers the sins of the past, no matter how wrong or shameful they may have been. But Lord, you uh, grant us mercy and you enable us to grant one another.